AJ, the last few years you've been pretty happy with the rosters that you've put together for opening day and twice you've been able to get to the postseason. How excited are you about this roster coming into opening day? Yeah, I think we're we're all all uh, very excited. I mean, you know, coming off of last season, getting to getting to the LCS and uh, getting close to the World Series. I think uh, everybody definitely, you know, hungry and, and hungry to to continue to take it and to take it another couple of steps. Some of the additions from the off season. Um, you know, I think uh, overall spring training. You know, getting getting the guys together and. Um, you know, coming out with uh, in, in general with uh, you know with 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 with, uh, with a healthy crew and, and getting ready to go play. So we're excited. It seemed like last year was more of a pitching oriented ball club. This year, is the offense going to be more of the standout? Is is that your anticipation? Yeah, I mean, I think again, I think like offense, we like the lineup. We think we have you know obviously with uh, having Juan Soto for a full season uh, in a couple of weeks. You know, hopefully getting getting Fernando back in the lineup and. Um, you know, again, like you know, I think from a depth standpoint, and, and you know, and, and, a, and a lineup that can beat you a lot of different ways. Um, you know, we think we should we think we should score runs, and, and hopefully it'll be a big strength of the club. With some of the additions that you made, it seemed like a lot of them have postseason experience. How important was that to you to keep the chemistry in the clubhouse and sort of have that veteran presence in there? Yeah, no, it, it is definitely definitely a factor for us. I mean, I think. Uh, you know, I think uh, definitely an added benefit when you add, you know, different guys that have been through October and been through pressure spots, and I think can add, you know, to to the ball club not just on the field, but but a lot of guys that bring some real experiences off the field. Matt Carpenter, Nelson Cruz, um, you know, a couple guys that made the team here late. Rugnet Odor, you know, they they played in the postseason. Uh, definitely, definitely not a negative for sure. AJ, how do you how do you view your catching situation? You got a veteran guy in Austin, on Luis Camposano. He's young, very talented, but also you know, sometimes, sometimes maybe that inexperience can work against you when you're trying to win a title. Like, how much opportunity do you think he's ready to take right now? Yeah, I think they, I think both guys you know, had a, had a really had really good camps and good spring training. You know. Um, you know, I think from uh, from Nola's standpoint, you know, obviously like going through you know the uh, the, the season last year and, and playing big games down the stretch, playing in the postseason, getting that experience. He's a guy that everybody has a lot of faith in and, and, and a lot of belief in in terms of uh, you know his ability to to call a game, run a game, um, and a lot of people have respect for him there. And then with Luis. Um, you know, he's had a really good last last three or four months. And you know, I think the last few years, like playing in AAA, and then getting a taste of the major leagues, and then this off season, a little bit of winter ball, and then you know, being here in San Diego, he's working out daily here at the ballpark, working out with uh, Joe Musgrove, Tim Hill, uh, some of the other pitchers, you Darvish, that were here, um, and he took it right into spring training. He had a good good camp, and you know, honestly, I think that's a spot coming into it that. Uh, you know that we had that we've looked at that I think could be an improvement on last year's team and those guys those guys uh, you know had a, had a really good last six weeks. You think Luis is ready to catch three or more times a week in the majors? Yeah, no, I think he's again like he's he's very talented and he's uh, I think he's put himself clearly in that spot where you know we feel good about about you know Campy and Nola catching for us and you know I think whatever Bob asks him to do whether it's you know whether he's playing in that in that traditional backup role whether he starts playing a lot more he'll earn his playing time but I think everybody in the building feels really good about where he's at right now. AJ, uh, Bob has talked about uh, just the chemistry of the team. He's asked about chemistry. He said he does not something he really worries about with this group. Manny spoke yesterday about not just having talented but like good character guys. How how hard is it? How rare is it to kind of meet the level of talent with character, chemistry, all those different attributes? Yeah, no, I mean it's, it's I think that's what uh, you know all all special teams they 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 have that you know the chemistry standpoint, and it starts just by having like quality individuals um, that you know have similar goals and. You know, obviously we've got uh, you know we've got a group from from the last two you know few years now, three or four years that have, that have been together. We've had some some different additions, but every time we talk about adding somebody, we're constantly talking about their makeup and you know how competitive they are, how much they love the game, um, you know, they, how how unselfish they are. Um, you know, I think there's rhyme or reason why we have a lot of quality people in that room. Our scouts have done a really good job of identifying you know winning type uh, characteristics and, and makeup players, and I think the clubhouse has a lot of them, and you know we think that's going to serve as well as year goes on and somewhat tongue-in-cheek but is there any correlation between how much you're able to spend going into the season and how you feel about the team and just opening day and launching into the season yeah I mean I think again like obviously you know we sit down every year you know Peter myself um, you know and and talk about you know budgets and you know where we're at from a payroll standpoint and I think you know again like I think the the support that 
the fan base has, you know, and has given us. You're talking about, you know, again, like, you know, drawing you know, close to 3 million fans last year, hopefully going north of that this year, um, and the success of the team. You know, I think that, that motivates everybody to, to continue pushing forward towards, uh, you know, towards, towards you know, a World Series type team and, um, you know, continuing to, to, you know, to try to put a team on the field from a payroll standpoint that enables us to do that. AJ Ryan Weathers is a guy who's had kind of an interesting trajectory with you guys. What do you make of his spring and kind of his, like, what contributions, how important he could be going forward here? Yeah, I think, uh, again, like him, you know, ultimately, you know, ends up in that in that five starter spot in, in a starting role. Um, we saw, you know, again, tick up in, in fastball, um, especially playability of the fastball, ability to get swings and misses in spring training. Um, you know, the velocity on the fastball was was consistently in the you know in mid to upper 90s at times, but you know somewhere in that in that 94, 97 range. Uh, the changeup was in play a lot for him here this uh, this spring training in terms of getting swing and misses there, and you know finding finding some secondary pitches and weapons that he can use against against other clubs and he's getting more comfortable with the spin so I, I think for him you know you look at the quality of his stuff in spring training it definitely was it was a step up from what we saw last year um you know he's again like he's he's, he's has big league experience um you know i think uh like you know we we talked to him going into the offseason about learning and growing from last year's experience i think his spring training was definitely a step in the right direction here and a spot on the team and and now we'll see how he does with it how do you feel about the way that Fernando finished um, spring training, and what do you want to see from him during the 20 games or so he's away from this team? Yeah, I thought, um, you know, as the camp went on, you know, again, like he got more and more, you know, I think, uh, especially in right field, I think that was the biggest thing you know, early on, and he's, a, he's such a good athlete, and I think, um, you know, I think uh, it's a new spot, a new position. It's not easy to play it in right field, and I think early on, like, it was just kind of getting by on athleticism, and as the camp went on, you start seeing him get more comfortable, first steps, tracking, routes, reads. Uh, the arm looks like it's going to be a weapon for us in right field. The accuracy of the arm is probably the nicest thing. You know, he's, he's got a, you know, he's made some throws there that not just arm strength wise, you know, throwing out runners, but but you know, putting him in a spot for Manny to make tags and for our guys to make tags. So. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he showed up, you know, the the, uh, the talent and ability, uh, you see it pretty quickly, but I think just getting more and more comfortable, especially in right field, that's probably been the, 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 the good part of the last few weeks. And, you know, I think just seeing him continue that over the next, you know, a couple of weeks, he'll get a chance to play in El Paso, get used to playing on an everyday basis, continue building those at-bats and be ready, hopefully, for the 20th for us here at the big leagues. I imagine it's a pretty good luxury to have Blake Snell as your number three, but when you guys knew that you Darvish was going to the WBC, did you, you and Bob prepare that he may not be ready to – he may not be built up for opening day. Yeah, well, I don't think we're really again. Like he, he looked like he was again. He he got very prepared for the WBC in terms of like the work that he did in the off season. So I think we went into it just open minded that, you know, again like that. Hey, go 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 enjoy your experience. It's probably a pretty special team in in a, in a time in Japan where. You know, I think for for you know for 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 Japanese baseball for that country, it obviously means a lot to them, and and what Darvish you know means to to that staff and that team. So I think we want them to focus on that front and prepared that you know when you get into tournament baseball in the WBC a lot of different things can happen we've seen it with some of our players here this year so um, I don't think we, we went into it going hey he might not be ready for opening day as the tournament unfolded and we started looking at it going you know hey enjoy your time there go win a you know go 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 win the championship there for, for Japan be part of that team and then we'll figure it out when you get back here but he threw I think he was five innings today it sounds like 80 plus pitches um, and should be on you know on, on turn here at the end of this week uh, you know beginning part of next week to, to take the ball and give us a inning, so with play, I can't put the phone on mute or silence or whatever. So uh, that's probably like the Darvish report from uh, from Arizona right now. So uh, yeah, um, with with Blake Snell, um, how important or are you, are you hopeful he'll be able to get to that point where he goes deeper into games or is, is what is he what? he is in what we've seen do you think yeah i think blake is again like he's he's got a cy young on, on you know on his resume um i think we've seen it here where it's not just you know it's for stretches that he can go and be just dominant and get you deep into games and go go uh, really take out a lineup and um you know hand the ball to the closer you know in the in the eighth or ninth inning I think what what you know I think the next step for him here in San Diego is kind of doing it from start to finish of a season you know I think it's 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 kind of been the second half story the last two years for him 
Um, you know, and I think the challenge there is, hey, like, you know, over the course of 30 starts, um, we all see the ability and the talent. We know what uh, what he can, what he brings to a team with, you know, three plus pitches and the ability to miss bats. And, um, you know, he's done it in some of the biggest spots, obviously, in, in the World Series stage in Tampa and, 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 you know, down the stretch for us the last couple of years. So he's had a good off season. You know, I think he's worked really hard um, from that standpoint and had a good spring training. And I think, you know, excited to see him take the ball tonight. And what we've seen a lot of the last few years in the second half, I think he's anxious to do it all year long. I think you said earlier in the off season you wanted to sit down with Juan Soto at some point before opening day and kind of talk about his priorities for the future beyond, you know, next next season. Have you been able to do that? And if so, like, where do you guys stand right now? Yeah, I mean, I think like conversation-wise, you know, I think with Juan, it's just been more, more, more about the baseball side of things, honestly. And um, you know, I think uh, you know the other thing too is like this year's spring training, honestly, like with with the WBC, it was you know guys were in and out of camp. Um, you know, so I, I think from that standpoint, it was it was a little different in terms of in terms of spring training. But um, you know, I think the conversation from a contract standpoint, that's that's always done with it with you know with with, with his agents and um, you know and, and and I think from that standpoint, I think that's the way Juan wants it done. That's the way we're going to talk about it. I think the focus really has been on the baseball side, and you know, anything we have to do on a contract standpoint, take care of that with with uh, with Scott and, and and his group. Do you expect any of those talks, those contract talks, could happen during the season, or is it has it been, you know, communicated to you? It's probably more of an off-season thing. Yeah, I, I, we'll see. I mean, I think I think from that standpoint, each player has been different. You know, in terms of like some guys don't mind talking in the season. I think for Juan, it's probably more of a situation where he wants to focus on baseball right now at this point in time, and you know, I don't want to speak for him, but I, you know, I think from from last year in DC. Um, it sounds like you know he, he just wants to be able to focus on on baseball and and, and the year. I think similar to the to the Manny situation, you know. I think we you know kind of hear each player is like how they want to take some of these you know the, the the negotiation. Manny's you know coming in and saying, hey, once I get to camp, don't really want to talk about it. Um, but then ultimately, as we were we were able to get on on common ground and kind of talk more, you know, we were able to get to a deal. I think from our standpoint, we'll always be open to at least hearing what anybody wants to talk about and at the right time. If uh, if you know if if player wants to wants to go down that path, we'll see if we line up. If not, we'll respect the player, and since most important, they go out and play well, and they're in a spot where, you know, they feel like they can do that and focus on baseball. So.